for taking us through all of the details of the company. We're also joined by Shrikant Nadella, whole time director and chief executive officer of Kfin Technologies. He's here in our studios. Shrikant, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Pavitra. And, uh, you know, it's good to have you here in the studios. And congratulations on the IP opening. We just heard it from Surbi, but, you know, if you could take us through a little bit about the workings of the business as well. We do know CAMS is listed and is our direct payer, but if you could tell us about your business model as well. Thank you so much, Pavisra. Thank you, Rima, for having me over. And a uh, uh, very good day and, uh, you know, welcome to all your viewers. Uh, KFintech uh, is a leading uh, platform-based solution provider for the capital market space, right? I mean, it's a company that's been in existence for a little over 37 years. Uh, we are one of the two uh, players in the market uh, who uh, provide the solutions and services to all the mutual fund, uh, you know, uh, companies in our country, the asset management companies. Uh, we are also the only, uh, you know, qualified registrar and transfer agent uh, who operate both on the investor solutions as well as on the issuer solutions, issuer here being the corporate. Uh, incidentally, uh, not just this, we are also one of the central record keeping agent to administer the national pension system. We also are present in India uh, and deliver uh, to the clients based in Malaysia, Philippines, Hong Kong and soon to start in Singapore as well. Mm. Can you tell us the key differences between your business model and CAMS for the benefit of our viewers? And also you were telling us that you have a higher or a majority share of the clients, mm -hmm. but your AUM mm -hmm. uh, is smaller than CAMS. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Sure. Uh, KFIN and CAM, so we, we operate in the similar space, as I said, both of us are called the Qualified Registrar and Transfer Agent, you know, CAMs. We compete with them in the case of the mutual funds. Uh, we are also present in the issue solutions, you know, where there is an unlisted peer uh, called LinkedIn Time, you know, we compete with them. Uh, but in terms of other lines of businesses, we are differentiated because we are the only player who operate beyond boundaries. As I said, you know, we have international presence. We have a clientele based in Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore uh, and Philippines. Uh, we are also uh, one of the at scale, uh, you know, uh, national pension system provider. We com command a little over five percent of the market share today. Manage a little over three hundred plus alternate investment funds that exist in the country, of the total base of eight hundred. Uh, we're also differentiated because we also manage a certain amount of mortgage book for one of the largest mortgage player based in the U.S. and Europe. So, so we're differentiated so from that point. National presence, alternate investment funds, which includes uh, pension as well as mortgage. Pensions, yes. That's so the, the key difference. I know. So CAMS is also present in pensions. They just okay. got the uh, license to administer the national pension system, but we've been there for a little while longer. Okay. And the difference between why your AUM is a lot sure. smaller and the market share and the trends that we're seeing on the front? See, based on the uh, Crystal report, uh, KFintech's market share in terms of the asset management companies is today about 59%. So that basically translates to 24 out of 41 asset management companies in the country uh, work with us. Yeah. As far as the AUM is concerned, that is a, a factor of how large our yeah. client are and how fast they've been growing. Historically, many of the bank-based asset management companies, you know, have been with uh, camps and they continue to grow. Uh, but if you see over the last four years, the trajectory and the velocity of the growth had largely been from that of the KFN tech service clients. We have seen market share gains from about 26% to 35% in the case of equity. Okay. Uh, we have seen a, a SIP market share increasing close to 42%. Uh, so with the number of asset management companies and a win rate, you know, that tends to add up a market share which continues to expand over a period of time. Mm -hmm. All right, got that. Um, I want to ask you about the issue as well because the IPO has opened today. We do know Kotak picked up around 10% in this around a year ago, November of 2021. That was at 185. Mm -hmm. Today, your issue is priced at almost double of that. Can you tell us what do you think is the key change that has come about in, in a one-year period for it to be priced like this? Sure. So it, I like to believe it's not just a one-year journey, but then it's a transformation that's architected and probably started about four, four and a half years back when General Atlantic Partners came into picture. Uh, it's a complete overhaul of the board. An independent board has been put in place. An independent management team led by myself, you know, have been put in place. Uh, but when Kotak Mahindra, uh, you know, bank had uh, come and invested, you know, sub 10%, uh, you know, around that time we have, uh, you know, had certain KPIs we have published in our RHP, uh, I think page number 128 if you look it up. Uh, see, at that point in time, uh, we wanted to have a marquee Indian player known for corporate governance standards to come and validate, you know, our governance standards too, right? At that point in time, the entire due diligence took, you know, roughly about a year. Uh, and, you know, the KMB Bank have seen close to three quarters of our performance, you know, during that period of time. So basically, based on the 2020 financials, right, is how the entire deal eventually got consummated in November 21. The key performance indicators from then to now, if you see, our revenues have grown a little over 50 percent. Our margins have grown over 37 percent since then. Market share in mutual funds has substantially increased. International presence expanded. The pensioners in the case of national pension system moved from about a quarter million to a little over 800,000 plus. Mm. So all of these speak about uh, financial performance as well as a pipeline that we've substantially built and, you know, 
make a you know significant movement from that. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about your margins? FI20 EBITDA margins were 35 percent. In FI21, it went to 44 percent. FI22 was 45 percent. Mm -hmm. But in the first half of this year, it's dropped to about 38 percent. That's correct. The reason for the drop and the longer term trajectory on margins, and how can you scale it up? Sure. The We've seen a you know a consistent increase in the margins over the past three years. Uh, that's on the back of a superior run rate in terms of revenue, as well as a lot of automation that we could orchestrate and engineer in terms of our operations as a scale expander. Mm -hmm. But it is also important for us to know that you know we are a company which is you know fairly diversified. We are very intentful of growing our international business. We are very intentful of growing our you know tech-based platform-driven business. Now all of those need certain investments. For example, in the six months that just went by. We have recruited country heads in each of the operating geographies, such as you know, Thailand and Philippines and Malaysia, so on and so forth. So there is a substantial investments being made in terms of the business development, investments going into the technology side and the platform, so that you know we are uh, not just ready for today, but then for tomorrow. Uh, we have also architected and you know, uh, for example, led uh, one of the largest IPOs our country had ever seen, LIC. And you know we have invested a substantial amount of money to provide a market experience to the investors. So apart from those one-off expenses, I'd like to believe that trajectory in terms of you know profitability, we'd like to believe that you know we'll be able to maintain something that we've seen in the past. So what are the margin range? What's the margin range you think you will be? So we've been uh, range bound, uh, you know, 40 to 45 percent in the past, right? And uh, we'd like to believe that anything beyond that, if we could accomplish, we would love to plow back in terms okay. of additional, you know, uh, modes for creation for the future. So long term margins in a range of 42 to 45 percent? Well, uh, if history repeats itself, and yeah, I think, you know, we're working towards that, yes. Yeah. Okay, just one final question because you did mention the international business as well. Right now, it's around a 90-10 split, right? Domestic to international. Where do you see that headed in, say, five years? Uh, yeah, so uh, international uh, for the period ending September uh, was about 13 mm. percent, uh, right? And we have made uh, certain acquisitions, uh, you know, not just managing the investor solutions, but also for fund accounting and administration, which also has international presence. We'd like to believe that, uh, you know, over time we will be present not just in Southeast Asia, but, you know, hopefully in the U.S. and European markets as well. Okay. And we want to orchestrate a revenue pool of probably about 20 odd percent in the near term in terms of the overall pool, even as it expands. So revenue contribution of the international business will rise from the current 13 percent to 20 percent? That's our Bye. intent and working towards you, yeah. Bye. Probably about a three-year horizon. Three three horizon. horizon. And how different are the business dynamics for the domestic business and international business? Uh, in terms of margins Different. or in terms of growth sure. rates or headwinds that you see? See, I, I think it's on the international, especially on the Asian side, uh, we render similar solutions as we render in India today, which is taking care of the investor side of the book, right? whether it's asset management or hedge funds or private equity alternatives, so on and so forth. That business is not vastly different in terms of our okay. operations. Uh, it is different to the extent that it is mostly orchestrating a win by moving in-house to an outsource model, right? Okay. Largely, it's, uh, it's all in-house at this point in time, yeah. unlike in the case of India. Uh, that's got its own problems. You know, there's a lot of inertia to move work, but then you know we're able to orchestrate. We won about 25 clientele in a matter of four years since mm. we started our international operations. But when you move to US and Europe, transfer agency is not a very prevalent business. You know, out there it is fund accounting and administration, and that's a very exciting business too. A lot of international players are there. It's about a four billion dollar business. Mm. Okay. Also, you've mentioned in your DRHP that you are looking to acquire um, an account aggregator. Is there anything that's on the anvil immediately or uh, say in the, by the end of this financial year, something that we can expect soon? See, we have a board constituted business development committee and then, you know, we constantly evaluate a series of options, you know, whether it is in the space of an adjacency or to gain a market access or to expand a book of business. And uh, account aggregation is definitely one of the adjacency we are looking at. Uh, you know, we evaluate about four or five at this point in time, but uh, hopefully, you know, I'll be able to, you know, discuss, you know, sometime later in the future. At this point in time, it's still on discussion. So. Okay. so four or five companies are currently under evaluation, right, for an M&A? Due diligence is off. Four or five companies we evaluate at any given point in okay. time. And our appetite had been roughly to, you know, about under $10 million uh, okay. in terms of our investment appetite. And, you know, typically we've been, you know, acquiring about a company or so. We won't be able to acquire four in a single year. So, so probably about one. Okay. Just one final question. What's uh, the balance sheet strength? Why is it that the company is not raising money? How much cash do you generate to support your investments that you are making to scale up your international presence as well as your M&A plans? Sure. See, uh, we... So, you know, much of our PAT converts into cash. We are an asset light model. We do not have any, you know, uh, assets except people are our assets, quite honestly. It's just the platforms that we build on top of that. Uh, we're sitting on a cash of about cash and cash equivalents of about 172 crores for the period ending September 2022. Okay. We did not need uh, for the raise for primary for sustaining uh, companies' operations. Uh, our international expansion is largely a factor of 
custom making our platform to fit the local geographical needs, mm. uh, which anyway we expense it out. Uh, outside of that, it's largely just taking the people. So I really don't need mm. you know capital to expand uh, you know internationally too. All right, Shrikan, thank you very much. We're going to leave it at that today, but we do hope to have you back uh, here. And then, you know, we will discuss more about the business as well, probably on listing days when we can speak to you again. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us. That is the management of Cape and Technologies, talking about the issue details as well as their outlook from